In this part two of Maya model and better windows for environments, I'm going to show you how to create hung windows as well as sliding windows. So here's what we're going to do. I'm going to show you how to create a window within the wall that has an upper portion and a bottom portion with a lot more detail than what we did in the first part. Then we're going to take this a little further and I'm going to show you how to separate them. So you have a bottom portion that you can slide up and down and have an openable window like so. Then I will show you how to create the geometry for those windows in the back, just in case if you are going to create uh, an environment that has an exterior, as well as the character can walk inside and see it from the other side. So you'll need some geometry back here. And in this version, I'll show you how to block that off. So you have a fully creatable window for exteriors and interiors with geometry on both sides. And then for the last part, I'll show you how to quickly take the same thing we've done and either you could just model it using the same techniques to create sliding window, or you could take what you already done, just rotate them, reposition and modify the pivot point, rework the wall and have sliding windows like so. So in the second part, we take everything we learned in the first part in the primer. We use very similar techniques, tools, and we go through and create much better looking windows that you can create for a residential type of a house or a building. Here I have a wall and I'm going to be using the same wall that we created in the first tutorial in the first part. So this is a simple cube that has some thickness of 20 and width and height is set to 300. So the first example, we are going to create the window right inside the wall itself. And I'm going to extract the pieces so we can model them separately. So like I've mentioned in the first video, what we could do is just uh, switch over to face component mode and select both faces front and back and then do an extrusion and do an offset and then just go through and scale this. But I'm not going to do this. I'm going to use multi-cut instead like I did in the first video. So that way I can align my edges right on the grid lines. Just so if I ever needed to in the future, I could have a more modular inner window that I could swap for something else. So I'm going to go to my own toolkit and I'm just going to make my cuts. Let me switch over to front view. So I'm going to hold down control. And right now I'm just going to insert one, two vertically, and then two more edges horizontally. And then I'm going to quickly come in, switch over to edge component mode, double click on each edge. So it selects the entire edge loop, hold X and just drag it. So I can go ahead and uh, position this better right on the grid, snapping it right to the grid lines. And let's do the same thing for this as well as for this, something like that. So that gives me the interior cutout and all the lines are right on the grid. Now this next part, what I'm going to do is uh, extract these faces where the window will be and deal with them as a separate piece of geometry because I will have to make a cut across. So if I was keeping it uh, as part of the wall, I would have to cut across the wall like so, and then try to deal with this piece of geometry within the wall element. And it, anytime you have to add extra geometry and then deal with having to cut and extrude, the wall will stay more simpler in terms of poly count while the window itself will have a lot more geometry added in. Easier to model things separated. So I'm going to select both of these faces and then extract them. Edit mesh, extract. So now they are separate pieces of geometry. So here's one, here's two, and here's the wall. Uh, the back face right here I don't need, so I'm going to delete it. So all we have is just a front face. Now I'm going to take this front face and let me modify the pivot point to it. Um, I'm going to snap it to the bottom vertex right here. So I'm going to hold down D, V, metal mouse click and drag, snap that pivot point, and then I'm just going to move it right in the center. So it's right in the center of the wall. Now I do need to deal with uh, the gap in between that uh, we have in the wall. So let's go ahead and bridge it and create faces in between edges. So I'm going to press control one to isolate select so I can just see the wall and I'm going to start selecting the edges, these two, hold shift to add to a selection and then inside the model toolkit, I'm going to bridge and I'm going to do this for all the edges. And the way I'm repeating bridge command is once you've enabled a command to use once to repeat last use command, just hit G as in go. And this will repeat whatever uh, command you use last, which is bridge in that case. And uh, let me switch over back to object mode. And I'm going to fix this by right clicking, hold, and then choose assigned existing material, Lambert one. 
All right, let me press Control one to bring everything back. All right, now we are ready. So the wall is done and now we just need to deal with the window. So for this window, of course, this is going to be a horizontal sliding hung window. So we'll have the bottom portion window and the top portion window. So to do this, we need more geometry so we can separate and model the top and the bottom. For this, I'm going to use multi-cut, hold control and middle mouse click. So it's right in the center of the face to insert an edge. And now I have top and the bottom faces. I'm going to select them both, hit control E to extrude. And let's start adjusting the offset. Uh, let's do offset of, the, uh, this is going to be our border. So let's do an offset of, let's try five. That looks pretty good, good thickness. Uh, but we have an issue is because uh, right now we are extruding with our set for both of those faces at the same time. So I actually want to treat them as separate faces. So that way I can separate the top and the bottom. And all I have to do is keep faces together, switch this off for the poly extrude command. And now I'm dealing with the top and the bottom separately. So the next thing to do is we are, have our borders. So these faces right here, these are our glass windows. And everything else is our border. I'm going to select the four faces for the top. This is going to be our border for the top window. And extrude, control E, and I'm going to add thickness. Let's do a thickness of three. And then we need to do something for the bottom. Now, not for the border itself, but for the glass. And we need to push that back. So I'm going to hit control E. And let's do a thickness of negative three. So here's what I have. I have the top portion for the window and the bottom portion of the window. And if I take a look at the side, here's what we have. So now this bottom portion would work by putting it up. Like if somebody was uh, to open the bottom portion of the window, because we have the top and the bottom. Now I'm not, I'm not going to do this for this one yet. So as far as a simple version window, this would be it. All you would do next is you can just go ahead, select both the wall and the window, and you could combine them. So actually let's go to mesh combine, and they can be one piece of geometry. You could keep them separate. If let's say you were going to swap this window within the same wall for another type of window, maybe a different variation. So you would keep the wall and the window separate in this case. So you would have two pieces of geometry, two modular pieces. And of course, the last step, you could come in here and add more detail. So we could go through, select all the edges for the glass or for the, for the border where the glass is. And let's say maybe do a bevel of segments of two and maybe 0.2 or 0.25. That will give you extra better looking corners you can also do the same thing for the wall corner around it. That will give you a better look in geometry. Let me undo. I'm going to keep this low poly, but just to give you uh, some variations. So here's a simple version of a hung or a sliding window that you can create. For the second variation, I want to go ahead and uh, have a bottom portion that I can move up and create an openable window. So let's go ahead. I'm going to take these two pieces of geometry. I'm going to duplicate them. Let's move them over here. Uh, let me go ahead and just move this back. So to create a bottom portion that you can slide up and down, uh, of course, we need to extract the bottom portion from the top. So I'm going to switch over to face component mode, select the bottom portion, just the glass, and let's grow our selection. Let's go to select, grow selection. I'm going to use my shortcut key, shift comma, or shift period to grow or shrink. So that way I select all the faces. And then I'm going to extract them. So they're a separate piece of geometry. So I'm just kind of checking if I selected all the faces. I did. Let's go ahead and uh, edit mesh and extract. So now I have the bottom por uh, the top portion and the bottom portion. Let me modify the pivot points because always they get modified whenever you extract. So for this, I'm going to modify my pivot point to be right here in the corner vertex, or I can actually snap it to maybe even the corner of the wall up to you at this point. I know this is right on the grid at the moment because I snapped it earlier. So I'm just going to snap it back because I know it'll be on the grid. So I'm going to hold on D, V, middle mouse click and drag. And for this one, let's do D, V, and middle mouse click and drag. I can always modify these pivot points later prior to export if I was going to take this into a game engine. So that's not a problem. Pivot points are always modifiable. Now with these two separate pieces of geometry, I could come in here and start raising this up. And I could just slide it up. Now there's going to be a slight problem. If I were to raise this up, you can see that it's overlapping. So we just need to make a few adjustments. 
So for the top, I'm going to take this face right here and I'm just going to move it forward slightly like so. So if I was to raise this up, let me check now. I think this should be good for now. Yep. We fixed this window. We moved it slightly forward and now there, there's not going to be uh, the front window or the top window and the bottom window glass itself is not going to be overlapping like it did. So now I can take this slider window and just say, create a wall, create a wall with a window that has uh, an open window. And maybe I can make a copy of it and maybe close this one down a little bit. So now you have some variation. Now let me go ahead and delete this one. Now this version here would require you to create an interior. And what you do with the windows in the back here will all depend if you will have an interior where a character will be able to walk through. So if all you could see is the outside and the windows themselves and the player or the camera or your view will never be inside the interior, inside the house, for example, inside the building, then you don't need to create any geometry back here. You just need to create an interior, some kind of a room. So if you do see it, you actually see the interior of a, of a building. But let's say if you wanted to make this entire thing 360 degree walkable, you would have to create geometry for the window and create the borders. So this is going to be the third example I'm going to show you on how to create the geometry behind it. So you have a fully created windows with full geometry in the front and the back. Uh, for those cases, if you do need an exterior and interior at the same time. So let me go ahead and make a copy of this. I'll duplicate it. And let me go ahead and move this down. So to create geometry in the back that you have, uh, so it's not invisible at the moment, because right now this geometry right here does not exist. So we need to fully create it and uh, create the faces for it. So to make this happen, we have to separate the windows or the glass away from the borders temporarily and then we'll uh, combine them back together because you don't need to have two faces for the glass the glass is usually is done through a material and it's a single plane that has a double-sided material that will display here as well as whatever here would be it would be the same thing so we don't need to create geometry for the glass itself that's already done all i need to do is extract it temporarily i'm going to grab this for the top the glass itself and i'm going to extract I'm going to do the same thing for the bottom. Edit mesh and extract. So now those are separate. Now I'm going to select these frames, the geometry at the object level and press control one to isolate select so we can deal with them and just get rid of everything else. And now we just need to recreate the faces. So let's select the top portion, switch over to edge and I'm going to double click on this edge. It'll select all of the outer edges. And let me take a look at the side and uh, let's extrude. I already moved these edges right here, so I don't have to worry about them at the moment. Uh, we will have to fuse and target weld uh, some vertices together, but the outer edge right now is what we need. And I'm going to extrude this, control E, and I'm going to add some thickness. And I'm going to add thickness of, let's see, let's do negative seven. I think that was the value that I used before. And that should be very close. Yep, it is. So having these values typed in rather than just sliding and leaving the decimals, if you remember what you typed in before, you can kind of align some of these edges back up to the other extruded parts earlier. So this is why I tend to enter values when I do extrusions with offset. So that way I can reproduce the same number if, uh, if I remember them. And it's a lot easier to remember when you type in numbers. So negative seven, perfect. And then I'm going to switch over to vertice and we just need to create the frame and uh, just kind of get rid of this gap. And I'm going to target weld these verts, left clicking and dragging and target weld all the verts to texture report that I just did and close up the gap. Let me do two more on the bottom and one more. Switch over back to object mode. And this frame is done. Let's do the same thing for the bottom frame. And then we'll bring the glass back and check. So I'm gonna double click on this edge, select all the four edges, all outer edges, control E to extrude. Let's do a thickness of negative seven as well. Let me take a look at the side. 
Uh, we don't need to go that far. So actually, let's do um, negative five, maybe even lower, maybe negative four. Let's try negative three. So that way I kind of match up the thickness to the top. So right here, this, this was negative three ex extracted. So I want to match up the extrusion so it matches to here. Uh, it's going to overlap some parts here, possibly, but let's just continue and then we'll fix if there was any z kind of Z axis finding where faces are on top of each other. But negative three for this. And let's do another extrusion. That was the outside border. And then we need to create the faces right here. So if I do another extrusion, control E, and in this case, uh, this will be negative seven. That will be perfect. And all I need to do for this version is just maybe select these two vertices because right now they're overlapping. And I can eat the target weld like I did before. And I think, uh, yeah, I think I should be able to target weld. I can see a tiny little gap. Or we can just select both of those vertices and try edit mesh and merge. And actually that worked. So let's let's just merge them instead of target weld. Make sure you select both of these, the both overlap and vertices. Edit mesh, merge. If you want to speed this up, just hit G to repeat the last use command, which is merge. All right, we have a frame for the bottom. Let's bring the glass back and check. Control one. So now we have the glass and the frame. And let me just select both of these on the bottom and I'm just going to raise them up. Like so. Let's check the front and the back. That's looking pretty good. Let's bring that down. I'm going to take the glass here and I'm just going to move the glass portion just slightly in so it's inside the frame and not on the outside, like almost fighting the, the other faces on the outside. So I just bring in that glass portion slightly in so we have a bit of a border where the glass would be, like so. That looks pretty good. Now all I need to do is combine the top with the glass and the bottom of the glass. So let's select both of these, the frame and the glass. Then go to mesh and combine. And do the same thing for the bottom. Mesh, combine. And modify the pivot points. So for this one, I'm, I will modify the pivot point to be right here at the top corner. D, V, middle mouse click and drag. And for this one, I'll modify it to the bottom left. D, V, middle mouse click and drag. So now we have something similar that we had here for this one with a sliding, but we have full geometry in the back. And like I said, don't worry about these black faces. They would be taken care of with the two-sided material for the glass. So now I can take this bottom portion. We can slide it up. Nothing is overlapping. And we have a full geometry window with control of sliding the bottom portion. And there are types of windows where you can actually slide the bottom. And sometimes you can actually slide the top as well. Just depends on the type of window you're creating. And very last thing I want to show you is at this moment we created what is known as a hung window, meaning it is uh, you can slide the bottom of the top portion up and down, and this is known as a hung window. But what if you want a sliding window where the windows slide left to right? So you just repeat the same exact thing, but instead of creating it uh, where you uh, create a cut across horizontally, you would just create one vertically. And you just basically repeat the same thing, but you just deal uh, with modeling this on a different axis. Instead of uh, creating the, the upper portion and the bottom portion, and then just having to extrude, you just do it left to right. And just repeat the same steps with a different orientation of extrusions. Or you, what you can do is you can take this existing window and actually turn it into a sliding instead of a hung. So I like just go ahead and uh, I can modify this really quick. I'm gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna take these two and let's rotate them. Now I want to rotate them together instead of individually. So I just need to modify the pivot points to be in the same exact position. So in this case, I'm going to hold down D, V, and let's just snap both of the pivot points right there in the corner. So now both pivot points for the top and the bottom portion are in the same spot. I will select them both, hit E for rotate. Then I'm going to hold down J and rotate them 90 degrees. I'm going to snap them to the grid, just position them where they would be. Let's take, go to front view. So here I have the windows. And then I would just have to modify the wall. So because I've stayed 
on the grid. Everything is snappable to the grid. And this is the beauty of working this way. I can just take these verts and quickly snap them to the grid, to this corner where the windows are. Can snap these verts to the other side. Can take these verts and snap them down. And uh, if I want a little bit more nicer topology, let me just snap these two at the top as well. So it's a little more even. Not that it matters, it just looks nicer. And here I have the same exact windows, just quickly modifiable that I can just slide one or the other and have sliding windows. Let's modify the pivot point for this window. D, V, middle mouse click and drag. And now you have your sliding windows with just very quick adjustment. So this is how you create more detailed windows that you have a lot more control for any residential type of building or house. And listen, you can become a better modeler very quickly by going through the second module of Maya Foundation, the Home Study course, and learning over 20 different modeling tools that you need to know to get started and to model pretty much anything for environment design. This is an extensive Maya course that has three modules, over 18 hours, and 65 videos. And you can download the course available right now.